So where are you at on Bond now? Because you, you know as well as I do that your name always comes around for Bond. There is about as much chance. No, I would say I, would, I think I've got more chance of being cast as Bond as directing Bond. Seriously? Yeah. Why do you say that? Ask them. They're, they're, they're not keen on me. Prepare your ears, humans. Happy, sad, confused begins now. I'm Josh Horowitz. Today on Happy, Sad, Confused, we've got a kick-ass director who actually has a kick-ass film to his credit. He's also got three Kingsman films and so many more credits. My favorite X-Men film of all time. And his latest coming soon is Argyle. I am so thrilled to welcome Matthew Vaughn to Happy, Sad, Confused for the very first time. Welcome, sir. Hello. <laughs> Quite an intro. Hey, I mean, no cue cards, just off the yeah, dome. I was impressed. I, I was really, I thought, wow, like, well done. Well, I'll, I'll do my best to keep you in that chair and happy and satisfied. I was going to say, like, you know, we were talking before, I've done some small bits and bobs with you over the years, but I feel very privileged. Like, in my research, you haven't done a lot of long chats about the, the career, and mm. I feel this trust is very misplaced. You've made a horrible call, Matthew. Well, you can thank the SAG strike. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so um, uh, I'm being asked to do things I wouldn't normally do, but um, hey ho. Um, I was going to say, yeah, you've 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 assembled this amazing cast for Argyle. Mm -hmm. yeah. You must be the most resentful man besides the actors for the strike, because normally you'd be pushing Henry and Sam and Bryce in front mm -hmm. of you. Yeah, no, I'm saying. Well, Matthew has to carry the load. This is your confused part. Um, <laughs> yes, it's. Um, it's frustrating, and um, but I think the strike's got a load more bigger problems and people than me. However, um, um, I, I do hope when it's over, it will be much more fun sitting here with a bunch of actors to hide behind. You're uh, you're in in town in my neck of the woods in New York for Comic Con. You are no stranger to Comic Cons. I remember you were here mm -hmm. for the King's Man a few mm -hmm. years ago. Um, do you have a affection for? cons for comic cons in particular what are your memories of coming to these kind of things over the years i have a huge huge affection um primarily they um made kick-ass get distribution so when we made kick-ass um it, yeah nobody wanted it and it was a terrifying moment because i turned up and we were going on stage after cameron with avatar oh, right. and i was <laughs> like this this the ingredients isn't are not help. there um <laughs> and yeah, let's say Avatar didn't soar then as much as we were imagining, and um, and I think uh, sometimes being the underdog helps. And it, the the audience were great. I mean, that room, Hall H, was fantastic, and, and their cheering made executives here maybe a little bit of money. And of course, they didn't have. Well, I'll be polite about them for a second, but they <laughs> did. They they needed a nudge, which that happened. Well, I was gonna you know get to this. This this is kind of a recurring theme in your career. Mm -hmm. I feel like. I love your work because my sense is over the years you you trust your own gut, you trust your instincts, you make the movies that you want to see on yeah. the big screen. Yeah. And studios, we love studios. There's some studio folks here. We they, they they put up the money, they make it happen. Why do you love studios? Well, I love it because they 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 have the mechanism by which we get to see your films. I also. Okay. Eventually. Eventually. <laughs> yeah. So I guess my, my question for you is do you feel that push and pull still? Because you've had to kind of like play that game. But you mm -hmm. also need to stay true to yourself, and you've somehow managed to do that. Um, yeah, I, I have to be well. <laughs> should I be careful? Be. <laughs> um, no, because it's um, uh, yeah. I think the studios. I mean, it, it's like any artistic form that um, you need to look at the music business now. You look at movies. You look at fashion. You know, the 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 financing and the the the, the commerce has taken over the yeah. creative. And that always means eventually for short term gains, you do well, long term, you kill everything. And I think that's what's happening right now, whether it's film, music, fashion, uh, art, even it's, it's, it's commerce took over. Yeah. Now I, the pendulum is about to swing back, started. Um, and um, cre creativity should always be the, you know, the driving force of any des decision. Right. And then you figure out how to make money out of it afterwards. But if you're trying to make money up front, you'll kill some brilliant franchises. Have you, what percentage of the notes you've gotten from studios over the years have actually been helpful, would you say? Can you think of um, any off the top of your head that actually Yeah, yeah, no, films? sometimes, uh, notes are a really good thing. Um, and sometimes the studio notes of something being wrong 
is their right. They're very good at identifying problems. They have not the solution. I was saying the solutions right, are it. truly dreadful. <laughs> um, and so I've, um, yeah, I think, um, n yeah, no, it, I'm trying to think of specific notes. So answer, I mean, you sort of, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really get that many notes because we're totally independent as well. So I, I tend to show, um, show movies when they're finished to, to the, to the, to Hollywood, um, but um, my friends, I mean, I, I, I love test, test screenings because then you get notes from people that are actually sitting there to enjoy the film. They're not scared of the movie not working. They're just watching it as a viewer. So their notes are, are, are um, they're correct, whether, you, whether I like them or not. Right. If you watch a movie and you have a reaction to it, it is what you have to listen to it. And when I try to do, if I don't like the, the, the reaction, if more people have this reaction I don't like, then I'll change it. Right. Or if it's just a, a one-off um, and it's balancing the um, the level of, of um, the complication you know if you get too complicated you lose too much of the audience but if it's too simple you lose the clever audience so it's, it's right. a balancing act um, for my movies which, which of your films do you think changed the most thanks to a series of screenings whether it's friends and family or just anonymous audiences that saw your movies as a producer we did a, had to do a lot of work on snatch with screenings um, um, and that was the first time we'd done test screenings with Snatch. We'd never done done that before. Right. Um, so it was odd suddenly making a movie that people were actually interested in. <laughs> um, so that, I think Snatch, we really had to hone a lot through screenings. And as a director, um, I'd probably say The King's Man, actually, because that was a real balancing act um, and of people really coming in expecting something totally, totally in the Kingsman world, not getting that. And trying to actually, we had, by the end, we did try and dial it back a little bit. Right, the Rasputin stuff. I know you, you dialed back a little bit because it was pretty. Oh, that was. Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We tried to make it less. Um, uh, I was about to say less manageable, and you can understand what that means <laughs> in, this, in a context as well. No, I remember being surprised in, in a good way by, by the King's Man because it, it, it more manageable, even. Sorry, but, um, <laughs> I yeah. got you. Yeah, but um, because it, it's as much like it was as much a, a World War One, you know drama in some ways as yeah. it was a wa your signature kind of wild style and it was right. a, a, a tricky thing a yeah. line to manage I would imagine yeah it was <clears throat> it was hard because the pressure on the king's man was and I had to explain this to certain people that it can't start as a kingsman movie because it is about the birth right. of the kingsman so you've got to start somewhere very you know it, it's in the first film when Colin Firth is talking about you know sure. we were founded in 1919 and because of the many many of our founders had lost their children in the war so I, I don't believe in a world war comedy it's not my my instinct at all so I felt we start there and it's and you know the death of comrade is the birth of the Kingsman and once we get through the sadness then we can start dialing up the um, uh, the more Kingsman-y tropes so for much of the last decade I mean obviously you've been producing a lot of things but on mm -hmm. the directing side really has been devoted to the two Kingsman films, The King's Man. Yeah. Now we have Argyle. Now we have Argyle. Uh, which definitely feels from the trailer, everything I love about Matthew Vaughn, that has some distinct differences from some of the films you've done in that. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll, we'll get more to than you will, then More than you can imagine, but you'll have to see it to find out what they are. Okay. Unless well, you've seen it. You I seen haven't it? seen it. Haven't I'm seen dying it. to okay. see it. Um, right. I'm all in on this, though. So let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about what this mm -hmm. movie is about. Um, so this is not based on any IP that I'm aware of. Well, define IP. Uh, Pre-existing. It's based on a book. It is based on a book. Yes. Okay, so I'm confused by this because I, has Good. this book been published yet? It's coming out in January. Okay. So it's been written. The author, I've read it. Okay. Yes. The author of the book, mm -hmm. the name of that person. Ellie Conway. Ellie is also one of your principal characters in Argyle, the author within the story. Correct. Credited as a co-screenwriter currently, I believe, on the film as well. So this is a real human being. No, no. Okay, Jason Fuchs is the, Jason the writer. Jason Fuchs is the writer. Okay. So real of human... Wrote the script. Wrote the, wrote the script. Ellie wrote the book. Mm -hmm. just, just getting the basics down for me. <laughs> Try. <laughs> I'm just doing my yeah. best. Okay. Um, so there's some meta qualities already because A lot of meta qualities. A lot and, of meta, yeah. And... I guess give me your, I don't know how you are on the, the quote-unquote elevator pitch. What is, what is in, a, in the gist, how would you describe what Argyle is? Well, 
do you want to finish off the book side of it or do you want me to pitch the film? Which one do you want? I want both, man. Let's pitch the film and then we'll come back around to the specifics about around the book. Um, so Argyle, like, 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 I mean, I'm always sort of just, most of my movies are always, I call them a love letter to the mo movies I loved right. as a kid or which I felt could be reinvented. And when we, um, during lockdown, I, it was the first time I could actually get the family to watch movies together and I could pick a film and they'd actually watch it because they were, you know, <laughs> they had no audience, choice. No yeah, choice. Exactly. And they were open. So we watched movies like Charade. We watched Romancing the Stone yeah. and, um, and they loved it. And actually my daughter said, why don't we make movies like this? And then in, with Serendipity came, I, I re read the book, the, well, the manuscript of the book and met with Fuchs and we just came up with this it is a very meta movie so it's got lots of tropes that I've been guilty of making with spy movies which we, we're sort of trying to reinvent and and then it, there's a whole se series of books planned and okay. so this movie I mean as I said I don't want to spoil it all but we I sort of like the idea of, of the, the book but also the idea of showing an author writing the book and it, it just inspired a whole lot of lot of just meta movie universe sort of not you know not, I didn't want to say metaverse because that's <laughs> a whole other, thing. Whole other yeah. thing but it it it, it, we, it I sort of like I love the idea of what would happen if JK Rowling met a wizard and was real <laughs> um, yeah. and so we sort of ended up and book four which is the movies based around okay um, was the one that would work for it so book one is being published but book one oh is you know you have to you know um, listen mr lucas was clever enough to start star wars at episode four so why not us um so there was a whole thing about four book four a meta universe in the sense of having fun with reinventing what the cliches of what spies are all about and then you guys you know you'll see you'll read book one which i hope to actually shoot next um so you jump back to book one book one yes okay there is a scene of book one in the movie. Okay. I feel like this is one of those movies where it's like almost easier just to watch the damn footage than to talk about what it is. It's not, it makes it Which I hope, uh, by the way, that was, that's the whole point of movies. Of course. <laughs> so <laughs> that would be good. So yes. So, and it's one and the thing I can say what I am excited about with Argyle is the trailer to Universal's credit. I said, you can only use the first 28 minutes of the film and they stuck to those rules oh, wow. so it isn't you know everyone goes oh the trailer's got all the good bits in i'm like you guys have seen nothing yet i love it okay so let's talk uh, there's a bunch of things you said there that i want to jump off of um you described it as a love letter to mm -hmm. 80s action movies were there were there, were mm -hmm. there filmmakers in particular that you zemeckis zemeckis is the guy yeah. romancing the stone of course romancing the stone it's back to the future right those, you know, blockbusters with heart and, and a wink. Is that the kind of thing then, like, to key your amazing cast in? You're like, do you show them movies? Is that helpful to be like, this is what we're, we're going no, for? No, It's on the page. They can get it. It should be on the page. Yeah. Or the, the, they will um, have it explained to them on the set what, if they don't understand <laughs> what it is. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your cast. Uh, we'll get to Cavill in a second because I know you have a bit of history there. But mm -hmm. I love seeing, I mean... Sam Rockwell is one of my spirit animals, obsessed with him. Um, okay. And I know this is only just the first 28 minutes, so I don't know if this is if he is your lead action guy or just a part of it, but to see him in that context, even from the trailer, mm -hmm. and you have a long history of this, of course, of kind of putting yeah. actors we don't necessarily associate with action, Yes. Um, putting them through their paces and making them into action stars. So where, where in the spectrum is Rockwell from, like the, the Colin Firth to the... Henry Cavill level of action. So we're in this. I'm not like. <laughs> I was about to say, where in the spectrum is is Rockwell is yeah, has his he has his own rainbow yeah. and um, <laughs> um, uh, so one of the themes of of the film it's not in the book. That's what I'm saying. That's where it's sort of interesting is is the world of espionage and how it's portrayed is whether it's Kingsman or Bond or. That you know there is that we we have this idea of what spies are, right? And then you have the Lacari version of what spies are, and I thought, well, Lacari is quite serious, in fact, very serious. Why don't I do a 
mashup of a Le Carre style spy film, a Kingsman style spy film, but the two balance each other and create a new type of genre. How does that relate just in terms of the, the, the Rockwell of it all? Well, Rockwell is more Le Carre-ish. I see. So he's gotcha. more Alec Guinness, sort of Got smiley it. people, where he is, you know, Rockwell can walk in a room, and I love him dearly, but you're not going to notice him. Yeah. All right, Henry Cavill will walk in a room, and you're going to notice Henry. Yes. And if you're a spy, you want to be the, a real spy. Right. You, you don't want to be, be noticed. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, that makes sense. So Rockwell actually is a proper super spy. Well, you know, Henry Cavill's would have a pro- imagined um, version. Yes, yes, exactly. So I, I, uh, I know you go back with Henry. And, and I'll say the difference yeah. between Hollywood and not. So, <laughs> and I'm sorry, guys, but I'm going to go for it now. <laughs> I'm warming up. So if Hollywood had made this movie, yes. they would have cast Brad Pitt as the super spy on, uh, you know, and then they would have thought it'd be great to cast Tom Cruise as the other Tom one. Tom Cruise <laughs> as the other one and go, but hey, you need, you need that contrast. You, you, need, got, you need the contrast and the reality of, of both worlds. Yes. Um, and that's, that's where Hollywood make, gets it wrong because they would think oh, that's Pitt and Cruz, definite hit. But when the movie doesn't actually make any sense and the audience go, nah. So you and Cabell go back to Stardust, of course, relatively yes. early in, in his career. Yeah, Humphrey. Yeah. Was, was it clear to you that he had the stuff to be... You know whether it was literally Superman, but like play those kind of parts, Man from Uncle, Superman. Oh, definitely. I mean, I cheered when he got cast as um, a Superman because he, the poor guy, had been down to the number two Bond, on yeah. so many franchises, <laughs> um, and I think he was even beginning to doubt that it was going to happen. So, um, and he's actually blossoming as well. I mean, I, you know, when you see him, in the, he's so good in the film, yeah. and he's lovely to work with. He's a gentleman, and. Um, Big fan, big fan of Henry. Do you, do you share his love of um, painting Warhammer figurines? Or are you as no. big a nerd as, as Henry Cavill? We build computers together. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, no, no. He's got different tastes when it comes to that stuff. Let's talk about America's number one meal kit. I, of course, am talking about HelloFresh, our sponsor on Happy, Sad, Confused this week. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip those trips to the grocery store. I hate going to the grocery store. You can count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy. Yes, fun, and of course, affordable. That is why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh does it all. They do the shopping, the meal planning for you. They make your life easier, bottom line. The ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-portioned. They're ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step recipe cards. How easy is that? I'm an idiot when it comes to cooking. They make it idiot proof. That's why I love HelloFresh. And we all know HelloFresh takes the hassle at a mealtime. But did you know that you can also, it can save you money? HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping. 25% less expensive than takeout, which I'm guilty of using way too much. That means less stress in your life, in your day, and more money in your pocket. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50HSC and use the code 50HSC for 50% off plus free shipping. In the last week, guys, we made chicken, we made pasta, we made burgers, all things I never would have done without HelloFresh. And you know what? It was delicious and it was easy. Again, HelloFresh.com slash 50HSC. Use that code 50HSC for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Okay, so since we do have a little bit of the luxury of time, give, give me a sense of sort of how your filmmaking um, loves developed as a kid. Like, did you have a, a one specific influence in your life that you can point to that introduced you to movies? Did you find movies and filmmakers on your own? When you think um, yeah, I mean, I'm not as, I mean, I, I know a lot of directors love to talk about the craft and, and, and I'm like, I just watch films and make them. I, I don't think it through as much as, I mean, I don't, no, no offense to what they do. What they do is brilliant and I learn from them, but by osmosis more than than studying it. I mean, you sure. know, um, but when I, I think I fell in love, I mean, it's such a cliche and now I'm at the age where everyone probably answered this question in the same way. But, I, you know, as a kid, I used to go to the cinema to like to the Disney um, there's a Disney um, cinema in St. Martin's Lane and it was always Disney films and, and I, I was like, yeah, they're okay. And then I saw 
Star Wars, Superman, and Raiders of the Lost Ark all in one year. And that was it. And then I went, no, this is the sort of movies I want to watch. Not was never thinking I want to make, um, but I wanted to watch. And that's what I've always, you know, I can talk to you more about blockbusters and commercial movies. If you asked me about Goddard or something, I wouldn't know who he is. Right. Part of that he was a film critic, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. That was the only thing about him I, I was intrigued about. The, um, obviously, in the early part of your career, um, you spent it as a producer, working yeah. obviously a lot with Guy Ritchie early mm-hmm. on. Did you have in your head, like, I guess I'm trying to understand the, the circumstances by which you became a director. I've heard you, whether joke or be serious, and say basically you wanted to be a director because you saw sort of like the things that you couldn't stand other people well, doing. Not a true? joke. No, no, it's deadly serious. It was, it was, um, yeah okay so so i like guy taught me so much by demystifying the whole process of directing all right um and it, it sounds crazy but when you make a movie it's literally you need a script camera and actors so it's and there's only x amount of places you can put a camera and x amount <laughs> of lenses so it's not um uh i'm not saying it's easy but it's not as complicated as people like to make it sound right, right, and you know, look at kids making great stuff on their iPhones. So, you know, it, it's, it's, um, it, it, so I, but I had no aspiration ever to direct at all. And then after working with Guy, we developed Layer Cake for Guy, right, and um, he decided not to direct it. And it was, it was Guy did the usual Richie comment of, well, there's no one in the world who could direct this as well as me, so you should just bin it, and. We'd done a lot of work on the script, and I was really passionate about it. And it was an odd moment where uh, uh, John Connolly or J.J. Connolly said to me, um, I said, look, I've got bad news. Guy's not directing it. And Connolly was like, well, I've only met Guy once. I've spent every day with you working on the script. You should do it. And I was like, "Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. And then then that night, I saw my wife, and my wife said the same thing to me. She, She said, you... You should do it, and I and I was nervous because I was just thinking that would ruin my. There's nothing worse if you're a producer and you have a go directing and it's terrible. Then you've lost all right. respect of any other director. That's just I think you're a back backseat wannabe director. Um, and I, but I, I, but something in my gut was saying it might. You know, you should do it. And um, and but when I made that movie, I knew nothing. I mean, the first day of filming. I, I remember looking through the lens, seeing Daniel, and I just kept, without thinking, I looked up to him and went, oh, I've never done, I've never looked through a lens before. And then, and then I looked back down, and all I saw was sheer horror on Daniel's face. <laughs> I was gonna just, say, that's the just, last thing an actor, yeah, anybody on a crew wants to hear. down, and I was like, I'll, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, is that, that's the director that just said that? Yeah. Great, we yeah. feel really good. Yeah, yeah, so anyway. And but, yet, and yet Lair Cake turns out phenomenally well, mm-hmm. and is, it boosts, Daniel Curley, we all know this. Daniel yeah. Craig turns into a star. He gets Bond off of it. Yeah. Is the word true? Did you also get Bond off of it? Correct me if I'm wrong. You thought you were the director of Casino for a day. Ken, so, um, yeah. It was a really weird time <laughs> when um, I got a phone call. The powers of the, uh, the, L, the old MGM saw Layer Cake, hadn't come out, and the Broccoli's saw it and they um uh i got a phone call saying would you be interested in meeting about doing casino royale and i was like oh my god um yes i would so i had this i read the book again and went met with them we all got on actually i thought really really well and then welcome to hollywood i get a phone call from mgm saying you've got the gig don't tell anyone i'm like okay i get it and i and they said you're you're then going to go meet Eon and they're going to tell you, but you have, to, and so I would go for this meeting and I'm pretending that I don't know. Right. And all I'm thinking is, come on, can we cut to the chase? I'm ready, to, ready to go. And ironically, we talked about who I'd cast and I said, what about Daniel? And they were like, we're not sure about Daniel. And I was like, okay. Um, but, and then, so MGM told me I had it. And then I had the lunch, had the meetings. And at the end of it, I wasn't offered it, so I I went home thoroughly confused. Then I rang up um, the chairman of MGM, and I said, uh, "What's going on?" And they went, "Ah, we spoke too soon. You ain't got it, and we're going to cast Daniel." I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> did you so, ever get any clarity? Did you ever talk to Barbara and the company and be like, "What did I did I say something wrong at lunch? Did I?" I probably said so many things wrong <laughs> at lunch that I killed myself. I think back then I was naive of 
you know, my skill set was making movies for a very small amount of money. Sure. So I do think I, I, I was doubting the the time that they wanted to make the movie in, and I kept saying I don't think there's enough time in. in in post and and because I was I would you know I'd, right. I I they wanted I, to hear I, the filmmaker say like absolutely whatever we'll, probably we'll, well I didn't know the concept of throwing money at problems right um, that's why X Men three I pulled out of as well because right. I was looking at I knew that the schedule they had, everything was impossible if they wanted to stick to the budget which that was my how my I was a producer yep. turned director so um, I learned later that budget and schedule is totally irrelevant to these guys they have a fake one that they will say they're intending to make right. and then it comes in at some ridiculous number and and that's that but that wasn't back then that was not the way i uh i made film i still don't make it like that but i but i, I you know I, I try to respect budgets still so where are you at on bond now because you you know as well as i do that your name always comes around for bond and currently they mm. are about to do their next reboot and you how do you know are they I don't know. I actually don't know. So nah. there is about as much chance. <laughs> no, I would say I would. I think I've got more more chance of being cast as Bond as directing Bond. Seriously? Yeah. Why do you say that? Ask them. They, they, I'm, they're not keen on me. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. If things ever shifted, do you have a, like? Do you know what you do with Bond? Yes. Can you give me a little hint. No. <laughs> would you go period? No, I've you know, it's, Kingsman is my Bond. Yeah. My my, because obviously Kingsman was a huge huge influence. So everything everything I do in Kingsman, I would have ended. Up, I would have done on Bond. Got it. Got it. Um, we don't have time to go into every film. Uh, obviously, you do Stardust, you do Kick Ass, you do honestly First Class. I think is my favorite of the X Men film. What you guys did with it. Cast that's, that's got a huge Bondy esque. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. So, so how much freedom did you? Is is First Class feel as much your film? I mean, you're working within a, studio, a big yeah. studio, a big IP that they yeah. have a lot of interest in. Yeah. What percentage would you say that's your film, the, the one you wanted to see on the screen, First Class? About 98%. I mean, what, 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 where First Class was a sort of a unique time was, one, I'd quit X3, right? right. So they knew when I went, and, and I was literally told by... Rothman and, and X amount of people, you'll never work in this town again. You do not walk off an X-Men movie. Right. You're an arrogant idiot. You've only done one film as a director. What are you doing? Um, and I walked off X-Men. I mean, it's a long story, but there was a lot of lies. And there was, and, and there was, I, was I was naive because I didn't realize they actually would have given me much more time and more money to, to solve it. Right. Um, but, um, and, and I, w I was just wasn't comfortable with... I mean, some of the lies that these other, not Rothman, which other, which I tend to talk Rothman about later, and it was, I mean, total lies about casting and, and the way they were dealing with other actors. Mm. Um, uh, I mean, it was so bad, I found a script called the Halle Bar Berry Draft, and I was like, wow, what is this? Because it's starting off in Ethiopia with, with, with storm creating oh, wow. rain, to, and I'm like, are we, are we doing this? And they're like, no, no, don't worry. Once she signed on, that's going in the bin. And then I, that when they, as soon as they said that to me, I was like, wow, if you're going to do that to an Oscar winning actress, I'm fucked. Yeah. So I literally got on the, got a cab, went to the, went home and then like, where are you? I'm, I'm home in London, not coming back. So they weren't happy about that. Um, then they saw kick ass and they actually Emma Watts and Tom said, look, we actually really want to do it differently. Would, you know, um, they didn't have a script. They, want, they said, you've got 10 months <laughs> from no script to we want it in the cinema. But now I knew, oh, my God, they'll give me the, the machine yeah. and the money. money. So I was like, okay, um, let's do it. But because we only had 10 months, Rothman became a partner. Not, not many people, everyone loves to slag Tom off because, he, I mean, he's, he's, he's a very loud, yes. opinionated guy. But he's clever underneath it all. And mm -hmm. once you navigate it and talk sometimes louder back to him um <laughs> but with a const you construct arguments with tom and he listens he's like he's he's a lawyer deep down yeah um and i kept and i had this this my secret weapon i was like okay we can do it your way tom but we'll miss the release date and then, then he'd back off very quickly and to his credit when he he was seeing the cut scenes and he 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 he's not he he loves film underneath the 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 bluster should we say <laughs> um and Again, and by the way, he's a guy that really identifies problems brilliantly. Um, right. Not great solutions, and I've told that to his face, but 
really good at knowing what the public wants and what they won't like. You, um, you move on to, you don't do D Days of Future Past, you do Kingsman. Yeah. Um, which... Well, I didn't do Days of Future Past because, welcome to Hollywood, I wasn't... I had to wait for Brian Singer to decide whether he wanted to do it, and no one had told me. So I worked on the script, right. got it all the whole thing ready, and then they were like, well, we want you to do it, but Brian's got first bite at it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go off and create my own franchise. I'm, I don't like all this, these secrets and yeah. and Playing contracts. And yeah. and um, yeah, so I was like, good luck. Have fun with it. Well, it clearly worked out. Um, Kingsman, you, I've, I've gone to know Taron a lot over the years, and right. what a gem, and obviously the, the casting of that is, is somewhat well known, and he's talked to me about this. He said mm -hmm. to me that initially Aaron was maybe on your mind for Eggsy. I've heard that Boyega was close. Boyega to close, Daniel Kalula very close. Oh, really? The chemistry between Kalula and Firth was unbelievable. Um, I totally forgot about Aaron. He, I mean, yeah, Aaron was considered, I met with him. Um, and then Taryn came in and just, I knew, you know, casting is sort of, again, if I do it very with, with my gut and, and my eyes. And you yeah. see it and you go, that, that kid or that, that lady or the guy, whatever it is, is got what I'm looking for. You guys have a, a very special thing going, obviously. Mm -hmm. You've produced a bunch of stuff he's been in as well. Yeah. He has absolute affection for you. When I did an event with him last year, I asked him about working with you, and he said with a big grin on his face, I love him, but he's a fucking nightmare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think he, he, he seems to... I can give you the exact same answer about him. I was going to yeah, say. Yeah. So what would you say? I mean, he must have been very green on that set. Did you have to... He was really green, but he didn't behave like he was green. Okay, so... He's he, very opinionated. He thinks he knows everything, and, you know, I have to bash that out of him right <laughs> and then but we we've actually come to a place where ironically we we, we could we were on the different end of the spectrum from life and um, views in life and and movies and you know so we're like um we're like still we've battered each other and right. become stronger it, it, my sense is like you know there are different ways to handle actors and coax great performances out of them mm. like, is that you know, you're not one to coddle an actor. Is Me? That, yeah, is that fair to say? Like, what, what's your attitude about working with actors? What's your most frequent direction, would you say, on a set to an actor? Has it evolved? Um, I tend to, tr that's, that's why casting is so important, because if you cast the right actor for the role, you, just stand back I'm, you know, you're, I'm just dialing up a little bit, shading it, um, sometimes explaining I, th I think one of the main things with actors is, is reminding them where it is in the film and what's happening because yes. sometimes I think oh well let's do this this would be a great idea and you're like well no because in 45 scenes later this character can't will have to be written out so um, but I, I, I yeah I, yeah. I, I, as I said if you cast it right um, it's, it's not as hard to, to draw out I mean, draw out performances because I'm not really the, the, I'm, I'm not a my job isn't to be an acting coach; it's, it's to be a director. So I, um, you know, I, you know, like, I'm not going to teach a stuntman how to kick someone or um, <laughs> hire the best people, you know, or uh, put them around you. Yeah. So hire, you know, cast it right. That makes your job a lot easier. Did you take it uh, personally I, uh, when Taron didn't get the Oscar nom for Rocket? It's furious, actually. I I genuinely believe that, um, and then when Austin Butler as well, I'm like. Okay, what happened here? That Taron, no offense to Austin and, and uh, Rami, they both did brilliantly, but I think what Taron did was j just as good, uh, let's just say I'll be polite, as yes. what they did. And um, and I also think the fact he was singing, yeah. um, and you know Rami wasn't, I just thought that took it to another level, and um, I still don't understand what happened there. Uh, and he, he's never gonna get a role as good as that either so that's what's sad about it so the association with Taron continues uh yeah. producing tetris another fine a new side of Taron we haven't seen yeah is he always on your mind how did he come to mind in terms of putting this one together is it Taron first or tetris first that was tetris first and um and when i read the script to tetris i was like did this really happen <laughs> and then i was like oh it it did and uh then lockdown happened and and you know you I spoke to Taron a lot during lockdown and, and I went, look, I don't know why, but for some reason, movies have been deemed so important. We're allowed to make films during, <laughs> during lockdown, but yeah. let's go off and make a movie. And, um, and I didn't want to direct it. Um, uh, and, but he, and I said, Taron, I'll be there. 
I'll, I'll look after 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 you, and I think it could be a really good for you to playing. You know, I knew I knew he can pull off a moustache, <laughs> yes, right? <he> can. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, so Tetris was. Yeah, I'm proud of it. It's a good film. Good movie. Yeah, I mean the breadth of material he's done in his young career, whether it's, you know, Eddie the Eagle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean these are these are transformative. Again, like there you go. Yeah. It takes a special kind of actor to yeah. rock a good mustache. Yes. Um and and we're just getting started with him, which is the most exciting part. Decades of great work to come. Yeah, and it, with him he you yeah, he's got a lot lot more to to show. All right, happy, sad, confused listeners, I have a little challenge for you. Do me a favor. Raise your hand if either of these situations maybe applies to you. Do you obsessively follow a super credible, I don't know, quote-unquote health expert on TikTok? Do you chase the latest diet craze that your friend swears by, thinking this is going to be the game changer? It's time for ZocDoc to enter your life, guys, because this is the service to use if you're looking for an actual patient-reviewed great doctor. There are thousands of top-rated doctors available on ZocDoc. They're all listed with verified patient reviews. So you can find and book a doctor who not only has years of experience in an actual medical degree, but also gets you. ZocDoc is a free app. You can find amazing doctors and book appointments online today. Talking about booking appointments with thousands upon thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for, for ones that take your insurance, imagine that, are located near you and treat almost any condition that you're searching for. Plus, with ZocDoc, the wait to see a doctor, the average wait between 24 to 48 hours. This is the service for you. Go to ZocDoc.com slash happy sad. Download the ZocDoc app for free. That's right, free. And find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc.com slash happy sad. ZocDoc.com slash happy sad. We do Golden Circle. Continue to cast the hell out of it, including mm -hmm. Pedro, who was not really much on people's radar quite yet. Not Pedro couldn't believe it. He kept saying, Are "You sure you're giving me the role?" I was like, <laughs> "You've got it." He's like, "I never get the roles. I'm older now. I'm not, this is it's never going to happen for me." It's like it will, it will, it, and it has. It did. It did. <laughs> yeah. It certainly did. Around this time too. Okay, I want to correct the lore or not. Mm -hmm. It was said that you were offered a Man of Steel sequel. Like, were you actually? No. What, what's the story behind so, Superman? Man, of, so I, with Mark, I'm, I'm a Superman nut, and yeah. so is Mark Miller, and Mark and I sat down and we plotted out a three picture deal, or not deal, trilogy fil film, and um, pitched it to Warners. And they This just, is after Man of Steel had come out already? No, it was before Man of Steel. Okay. That's what I'm saying, it's so weird. Got it. So we pitched the, 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 how to do a trilogy of Superman movies, they warners said they weren't interested and that's my that's as far as as it went that's the closest ever came it hasn't that's come back closest. around never come back around again I, I don't expect you to divulge everything but like what was the gist that what would you do with superman that's different than what we've seen or what or similar to the donner films or or what or yeah i think i i think donner nailed it yeah um and i think wonder woman worked very well because it was basically a donner superman film yeah. but reimagined as Wonder Woman. Um and um yeah, I, I I would have done it a modern version of you know of 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 the Donna and we we wanted to do it our, our big idea was a twist that Krypton doesn't blow up. Okay. Um it does eventually. So <laughs> Spoiler the on dad the movie was too, yeah, the dad was right. He just got his timing wrong. Oh, okay. So when Superman's grown up, suddenly there's a mass exodus and then all hell breaks loose. Um, and that was that was our, our our idea. Who was your main villain? Did you have uh, was it Zod? Brainiac, Zod, um, Zod and Brainiac basically, and Luther. Luther Luther was the main villain until Krypton up until Krypton explodes right. and then escalated. Then you get some Kryptonians. Yeah, yeah then it all, all goes all goes. Yeah, exactly. That was sort of the idea. I'm surprised, given your association with Henry, that they wouldn't at least have a chat with you at some point about. Um, no, I, I wonder. Well, DC have reached out, and Gunn and Peter, we, we, we've been talking, and they're right. great. But um, James, you know, he ring fenced Superman. Uh, yeah, the authority has been mentioned as something, but is that of interest to you? Um, I, I, I never say never. At the moment, I'm very much enjoying creating 
my own my own things because yep. as i said i don't get all the tentacles of political madness can't get hold of it yes. um and uh i think guns uh, the franchise or dc's in the best hands it's been in for a long time yep. so let's let's see what happens as a friend and a collaborator with taron mm -hmm. should he do wolverine if he's offered the role i think it'd be better as lex luther <laughs> i think it'd be an amazing luther he shouldn't be wolverine I don't think. Any particular reason why? I don't think he's right for it. I think you've got to go more, uh, really go back to what the comic uh, Hughes, brilliant as Wolverine. Yeah. But I would go back to the, what the comic is, go really small little gr grizzly, right. tough right. guy. Bob Hoskins back in the day. They exactly. Wanted, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what I would do. I don't know who it is, but I, I, I think Hughes made it so iconic yes. that you have to do you, something different. You, if you go into that, you know, whoever's trying to do the Hugh version, they're buggered. So, and Taron as Luther, just because I mean, we saw a little bit in Blackbird, a little bit. The, the yeah, darkness. I think he would make an amazing, intelligent villain with depth. I love it. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the world building of both Argyle and and where Kingsman's at. So Argyle, mm -hmm. it sounds like full steam ahead. If the audience is there, you have passion for this material, and there's yeah, yeah. If it, it's like anything, it's because it, I'm, I'm my thing about Argyle or anything I do is 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 I think what's exciting about this summer is the studio being forced to to realize that directors actually are quite an important part of making a movie. Imagine that, yeah. Um, and new IP is okay as well. Yes. Um, and one of the reasons new IP doesn't work is the studio just doesn't get behind them because right. they're, 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 I always say it's madness. You'll spend more money on a Harry Potter or a Superman advertising it when everyone knows what it is, but you do a new piece of IP That's and, what needs and the they push. don't spend the yes. money so no one's heard of it or knows what it is. And it's this sort of vicious circle of, of new IP never really breaking through. Um, yeah, and it's pretty basic. You make a great quality product and then you get you get enough of the audience into the theater to spread mm. the good word. But you have to it. spend a lot more money to get them in. Yes. Right. Yeah. So and they, and that goes against all their instincts yes. or training. So um, um, but for me, you know, when I was a kid, Close Encounters was, was new IP. Raiders right. was new IP. Right. These were all new. You know, we I wasn't. Um, and actually the sequels, remember, always were mainly diminishing yeah. because we were like, oh God, they made another one? Yeah. Um, or you spread them out enough. So, um, and I just like the challenge of, of launching new IP. I think it's, it's, it's harder, but it's, it's, more, um, it's more fun. And Argyle, as I said, we've got the book coming out and we'd love to do the book next. And we have an Argyle 2 planned. So there is a universe and, that's, and, and what we're trying to do with Marv is sort of you know, Marvel to superheroes we want to be despised as well so we've got the kingsman on the right i'd say <laughs> argyle's on the left and then we've got an idea for something in the middle as well and then you've got these these sort of competing franchises in a galaxy that one day might meet and oh they might might converge. meet yeah one you just day. drop that very subtly in the back yes. <laughs> yeah wait yeah oh so you have an, that's mm. that's interesting yeah because, uh, I mean, one of the things that, that we haven't said that, that is a little bit different is also this is not R-rated material. This is uh, fair to say. I mean, it's not. It's um, not or I ha it? We haven't got it rated yet, so I'm intrigued. I think it's not R-rated, <laughs> okay. but I think my mind, I, I'm probably more of a very strong P PG-13 guy. So um, uh, I'm hoping it's PG-13. Yeah. Are you looking forward to potentially not? You've had some ratings fights over the years. You've mm -hmm. had some issues. So hopefully this one will be a little bit more. This will be easier. It should be easier. I mean, it, it was designed, as I said, I designed it watching it with my, my, my daughters. So right. I've made it so that they've watched the movie. Let's put it that way. They'll okay. be my fiercest critics and guides on this one. And where are we at on, on Kingsman? Obviously, Taryn's talked about this. You've talked mm -hmm. about this, having a third film. We want, um, to end the, we want to end the relationship, well, not end the relationship, but conclude, should we say, the relationship with um, Harry and Eggsy. And it's 90% it's written. Okay. It's the, the issue I have right now is I'm, while Hollywood is figuring itself out, I just want to know who my partner on it will be. Right. So in the sense of, of distribution and... Um, and that's why we want to get Argyle finished because, as I said, we, we're planning the, the spy universe, so we have to pick. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm not. I can't distribute movies. So, so just, Kingsman isn't still necessarily absolutely with Fox. Oh no, Kingsman's Marv. We we have it all. Ourselves. So you can do what you want. We with can it, do essentially. what we want with that, and what we want to do with, with you know with, with Argyle. So I want to make sure 
you can't build a universe if you're at three different studios. So, you right. know, you, you like Fox and Disney with X-Men and Spider-Man at, at um, Sony. Sony yep. Thank you. It, it, you know, it just creates problems. So it's much yep. better to... Well, especially if you want these to converge. Yeah, at a certain if you point, want that's them to bring impossible. together and, and, and you want people that are protecting the assets yep. even when they're not making the asset. So so that's, um, that's, that's one of the things Marv's deciding at the moment. Is there still ambition? Because I know there have been a lot of other uh, ideas in the Kingsman mm -hmm. universe. Uh, there was talk of a Statesman film oh, yeah, no, or we TV want to, show. Yeah, TV. Or... We, the, the, the idea is Kingsman from now on is the modern Kingsman, or it will be for cinema, and then the Kings. Because the Kingsman, was, the movie, the Kingsman was meant to be a TV series, by the way. It really was, I and see. then I got sort of dragged into making it as a film. <laughs> um, but we've yeah, so we do want to do 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 TV with it. I mean, it's a remarkable thing that you've been able to kind of create your own sandboxes with, you know, association with Mark Miller, et cetera, mm -hmm. and to create these worlds. That being said, you know, we've talked about other IP that you've kind of dipped into, whether it's X-Men or, mm -hmm. or flirted with. You mentioned a film that was formative to you early on. Would you ever do Star Wars? Would that be tough to say no to? Uh, yeah. It, well... Now, not so much. Um, it's been tainted a little bit. It's, it's a little. <laughs> well, it, well, it's not just been tainted, tainted, and I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to go there. But I would <laughs> say, um, for me, doing a Star Wars movie is to play with the characters that I loved. So if they said to me, "We'll reboot," do you want to reboot Star Wars and actually have Luke Skywalker solo and Vader, and you do your version of it, everyone would say you're an idiot to try. But that would excite me. Oh my god, um, you are. You won't have a death wish. That's so that's so scary to even contemplate That'd recasting. That's boring. Yeah, why not? Wow. Bond. Do you mind Bond? That's I mean, true. If, that's true. You know, you asked me who's going to play the next Wolverine. That's true. Why are these characters so hallowed that from '77 you can't redo it for a new audience? And that's the story. I mean, Star Wars is the Skywalker family. Yeah. All right, and that's where I think they've gone wrong because they've forgot that it's what you know and 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 they've done brilliantly in the tv but it needs an epic new film and that's what i would do i'll go right everyone's gonna go batshit crazy <laughs> but <laughs> but let's bring it on because if you want a new generation make the movie for them and the old generation can hopefully make it well enough that they go okay i'm enjoying it yeah is there a trend in in movies you see on the screen less about kind of like what the studios are doing we've talked about sort of why it's compromised product I hate calling it product, well, compromising films, but like, mm. you know, you, you've made your bones in great action, a lot of mm -hmm. great action. Yes. Are you sensitive to that? As, as someone that grew up in the 80s and, and saw all sorts of action, like I have a very high bar at this point and I love your stuff. I love like the John Wick stuff and Mission, mm -hmm. but besides that stuff, 90% of the action I see now is, is crap and I can't stand it. Are you sensitive to that as a, like, what do you, what are the, your, your pet peeves, your loves, your hates in modern adventure action filmmaking, would you say? Um, when the action isn't telling a story, yeah. that's when I get bored. Because, and, you know, even if you look at the Marvel movies, the action now in Marvel films, you could literally intercut seven Marvel movies together in the action sequences, and you wouldn't know that you're intercutting between the right. different, the only thing that gives it away would be the costume, but not the, not the style, not the punch, not the, and there's no story. They're just, everyone's just, hitting each other yeah. or shooting each other or blowing things up. Um, so I'm always, all I care about when I, when, with, with action is, is it telling a story? Is it visually doing something we haven't seen before? So there are two sequences in Argyle that you will go, never seen that before. Um, I'm not, so, you know, and, and I'm, which I'm proud of. I mean, yeah. it's getting hard. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there's not much um, left. What else can we do that surprise um, an audience? Yeah. But there are two very, very, and by the way, they're very Marmite. A lot of people have, have, have when I, we've tested the movie, going, you know, what is your favorite scene? X action. What is the scene you most hate? The same X. Um, which then I get excited because I'm because right. uh, I, I think it means it's it something's means happening. <laughs> there's going to be this, you know, people. I, I want to make movies that people either love or hate. But if they go, yeah, it was all right. It's, it, then number f you know five out of ten, I'm not interested in. I'm like uh, you know. Uh, well, let's let's wrap on this. We talked a lot about your your casting mm -hmm. acumen over the years. Um, what's the one you proudest of? Your a, a discovery, one you had to fight for. The studio tooth and nail said, no, this is not the person. You know, whether it's Taron, Jennifer Lawrence, I know wasn't necessarily an easy. That wasn't easy. No. Um, um, do you know? I'm I'm sort of proud of every all of them. I think yeah. it's really because they've it's. Um, 
Have you ever made a mistake? Have you ever cast the wrong person in a role and felt like, oh fuck, where are my instincts here? What happened? Well, I did it once and they and I fired them after the second day and recast. So I'm not gonna go. say who it is because okay. I realized <laughs> the movie is not gonna work. Um, um, and I fired quite a few actors during rehearsals as well. Um, um, but um, I don't. It, it, it's it, it's really nice when you see people that are desperate to, to, to have a career as an actor and then they go on and become movie stars and, and yeah, it's, 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 it's nice. I mean, it's, um, the, they're, um, yeah, some of them, I mean, yeah, I, you know, I like, I'm, they've all been fantastic. Well, I've been it, very lucky with the it, actors. And it makes you look good. And because really easy for me as well. Cause they don't, I don't have to deal with all the, the ego crap right. and they tend not to, when I see them dial that up with me. Cause right. I'm like, well, you knew them dude, when and yeah, you, yeah, like, exactly. You know, so, um, <laughs> But also, I also feel with movies, when you cast people that you don't know them, they really are that character, you know? Right. So, like, for me, Luke Skywalker is Luke Skywalker. It was, it was never, right. oh, Mark Hamill's doing a great performance. You're like, that's just Luke Skywalker up, totally. up there. So I do, it, it's, it is hard, the more famous these stars become, that they don't, it's hard for them to really be that character. Because sure. you're just going, oh, X, movie star's doing a great performance, but it's it's... But they are doing a performance, so there is something about. Um, I try to. I, I always like it when the movie is the star. Yep. And I think, that, and they last as well, longer. longer. Well, I, I'm very excited to see. This is this is one of those rare conversations where we, um, you know, we have a little bit of a road to Argyle. It's February second. It comes out. Yeah. Um, I love the early stuff we've seen. You literally have like cast like my all star team of actors. Like this mm -hmm. is just an, an amazing assembly of talent, um, and I know the combo of that and your direction is gonna turn into something fantastic. Um, good luck to the finish line, getting a good rating, getting the audience in theaters. Touch wood, and really touch wood. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and enjoy your Comic-Con, man. And, and again, seriously, I'm such a fan, and I, I appreciate you you and, and Team Vaughn trusting me with this long mm. conversation, which I know is not necessarily uh, something you've done a lot of, so it means a lot. Mm. Well, I would say, the other positioning we're trying to do at Ar Argyle is it's a, the perfect date movie. Okay. It really is the perfect date movie that I think, yeah, I'm not going to get into it to why, but, but it's, it's a good date movie. Uh, the wife is already in. This is yeah. her cup of tea. So we'll, we'll, mm. we'll get, you'll get at least two tickets out of me. Please do. Are you, are you watching the um, thing tonight? Today? I'll be there, of course. Uh, you'll, you'll see a scene, which will, you can ask me afterwards. And then you'll, you'll go, oh, I'm really beginning to understand this. Excellent. And the fact that I've only seen portions from the first 28 minutes, very excited, man. Um, mm. Thank you again, truly. Well, thank you. And so ends another edition of Happy, Sad, Confused. Remember to review, rate, and subscribe to this show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm a big podcast person. I'm Daisy Ridley, and I definitely wasn't pressured to do this by Josh. <laughs>